welcome you to worship on this Christ the King Sunday. It is the end of the church year, the final Sunday in which we celebrate Christ coming again as King. Next Sunday begins the Advent season, the looking forward to Christ coming and to his birth. But today we celebrate Christ the King, and I call your attention to the announcements. Prayer meeting via Zoom at 8 a.m. After a one-week pause, Good News Club will resume again at 3.30. On Thursday, our Bible study down at Sharpsburg, Vintage Park, it is my time to preach there, and we're moving the service to 9, because I have a funeral that day at 11. Also, let you know that the first Sunday of Advent, next Sunday, is the Sunday of Hope. For those of you who prepare ahead, the Sunday of Hope. Are there other further announcements coming? Next Sunday, join us for a coffee and conversation in the entryway at 10 o'clock. Coffee and conversation in the entryway at 10 o'clock to start the Advent season and the church year. Thank you. One final announcement. Those of you who are worshiping with us via live stream, if you would like to prepare your own elements, your own bread, your own juice for Holy Communion, that will take place about 40 minutes from now. Let us worship God. Our song of preparation remains seated. It's hymn number 67, Majesty.
may turn to your neighbors and pass the peace of Christ. Young people, come on down for our children's message. Be a goat. No, I don't want to be a 
a ghost. No. Cause the ghost ain't got no hope. No. I don't want to be a goat. No. I just want to be a sheep. Bad. I just want to be a sheep. Bad. Going where the shepherd leads. Bad. I just want to be a sheep. Bad. Yeah. I don't want to be a goat. No. I don't want to be a goat. No. Cause a goat ain't got no hope. No. I don't want to be a goat. No. Perfect. Christy, do you have a bag for one, two, three? And then Matthew at the back, number four. And after you receive your bag, you can go to your seat. Thank you. I bring you concerns today from the Sharpsburg Church to begin our prayer time. Little Alexia Whipple, who lives here in Lenox, taken back to the hospital of her third trip to the University of Nebraska Medical Center on Tuesday, and she's still there. Low potassium, struggling with several things of her fragile health, but uh, Norma Kingery is out there with her, as well as Nikki Whipple, her mother, and got a text from them this morning that she is improving, but still needs prayer. So we lift up little Alexia Whipple and her caretaker, caretakers. She has many, but Norma and Nikki right now are caring for her. Also, Ken Pollard, his brother died. And Ken is on his way now to Syracuse, New York, traveling by car with his other brother to his oldest brother's funeral. So if we would lift up the Pollard family and safe travels. Other prayers today? May. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Todd, our prayers will be with you tomorrow as you get your hip replaced. It's just a little procedure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. Routine. Nothing to it, says Todd. Perfect. Other prayers this morning, joys, or concerns to be lifted up? Patty. Mike Gray. He's now starting his third week of treatments. Is that? Till the middle of December. So we'll continue to remember Patty's brother, Mike Gray, a brain tumor. Sandy? My brother Brad had good surgical results, his gallbladder removed, the cancerous tumor removed, but he begins chemotherapy that has some nasty side effects, or he already began it. So if we would lift Brad up in prayer, and my Aunt Janet has now been in the hospital for about 10 days, hopes to go home tomorrow. No blockages in the heart, no blood clots they could find. Um, they shocked her heart back into rhythm, and she seems to be doing better. So, prayers for Aunt Jen. Do you have a prayer concern, ma'am? Um, Cameron's birthday is on Thursday. Cameron. How old, Cam? 22. 22. And will you graduate from college, too? Yep, December 16th, I'll graduate. 
Hey, turn 22 and graduate on the 28th. I think Cam deserves a little bit. <laughs> Finishing up for college in just three and a half years, is that right? Yeah, I'll start grad school in the spring. And you start grad school in the spring. I was going to say, Christy and Monty didn't want you out of school yet, right? No. <laughs> Others today. Have you heard how Jean Lindell's doing? I did hear from Jeannie Lindell. And by the way, she has a birthday this week. It was in the paper to draw for a note. She is recovering well, just immobilized quite a bit by her shoulder surgery. She has been using a walker to walk, so when you don't have a shoulder to hold on to the walker, it's kind of tough. But she sounded upbeat. So, but we need to keep remembering Jeannie Lindell and she probably doesn't tell me all the pain she has either. <laughs> Others today, Steve. I just might say to Cam that if, if you get done early, it's just another time you gotta work till you retire. <laughs> <laughs> but also Vivian. Yes, Vivian Strait, our oldest member, has a birthday tomorrow. So she'd love to hear from you or get a, a visit. Vivian Strait at the Lennox Care Center. Thank you. Um, there's a missing truck driver in northwest Iowa, and they're searching for him. So prayers that he can be found. A missing truck driver in northwest Iowa. Yes, and we have two churches with truck drivers in them, so we lift them up. I saw another hand. Yes. Uh, Rosalie and her uh, my grandson David are headed for Texas today. Rosalie and David headed for Texas. Is this for the winter? We lift them up in prayer for traveling mercies and a good winter. They picked a very good day to start. <laughs> Perfect day to start, right? Yes. A friend for Shirley and her husband, Mike, on first day of Friday. And both are still suffering from pain. And first for my sister, Vanessa Carson, and her husband, Ted Carlson. And prayers for, um, Faith Cordell. <laughs> for Shirley and Mike, your in laws. For Faith Cordell and for that and Vanessa. Perfect. We lift up Rival and thank you, Rival, for all the people you pray for in a week. I also think we ought to celebrate the truce, the ceasefire that is holding and prisoners being released. Um, God only knows how long it will last, but signs of peace in the Middle East. We'll take that. Let's pray. Kind and merciful God, we begin globally with prayers of thanks for those who have negotiated a ceasefire, for aid pouring into Gaza to help those who have been wounded, to help those who are hungry and homeless. We also are thankful, Lord, that some of those who have been kidnapped have been released and some of those in prison have been set free. Lord, these are signs of your kingdom come. We pray that these signs might continue. We pray also locally, Lord, for the persons that we have lifted up, little Alexia, the Pollard family, Jimmy Carter and family and the death of Rosalind, we lift up Todd going in for surgery, Mike Gray and Brad Max are both continuing with cancer treatments. We pray for Janet Waring. We pray for Jeannie Lindell. We pray for Cameron and Vivian as they celebrate birthdays. We pray for Rosalie and David as they head for Texas. We pray for a missing truck driver that he might be found safe. We pray for Vanessa and Thad, for 
Shirley and Mike for Faith, for Rival, and for all the unspoken concerns in our hearts. Hear these, the prayers of your people, O God, even as we pray the prayer you taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of meditation, 69, remain seated. His name is wonderful. Two verses.
hearts of your people. Multiply them that your work might be done on earth as in heaven. Through Christ we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And I will call to your attention one announcement I forgot. I think they were in every bulletin this week. But if you'd like to buy a poinsettia, you still have about two weeks to get them in. And we'll turn them in. And that way the poinsettias will all be purchased, placed around the church. And then you can take them home at the end of the Christmas season. Thank you. Our first scripture reading today is from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered, because they were, there was no shepherd. And scattered they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep were scattered. They wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with no one to search or seek for them. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, I shall judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? When you drink of clear water, must you foul the rest with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have fouled with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns, until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. And our second scripture reading today is from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 45. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all His angels with Him, He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing, and when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will answer them. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, Depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to 
to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Those of you who grew up in the 1960s and 70s and had access to a television, and those of you who grew up maybe in the 80s and 90s and saw a lot of reruns, well, you should be familiar with the fictional character, Gomer Pyle. An auto mechanic played by Jim Neighbors, who first appeared on TV in 1962 in the middle of the third season of the Andy Griffith Show. Gomer Pyle was a naive but gentle auto mechanic in the town of Mayberry, North Carolina. And his role became so popular that in 1964, CBS spun off a new TV show, Gomer Pyle, USMC, as in the United States Marine Corps. Yes, Gomer Pyle enlisted in the Marine Corps, voluntarily of course, determined to help save his country. His drill sergeant, a high-octane, short-fueled man, Sergeant Carter, was determined to change the sweet-natured Gomer Pyle into a hard-charging Marine Corps man. But over the course of the six seasons, Sergeant Carter never managed to change Gomer Pyle. In fact, and this was the key to the series, Gomer Pyle did more to change Sergeant Carter and the whole Marine Corps than they changed him. Now mind you, Gomer Pyle always followed orders. It's just he followed orders in a way that nobody expected, especially not Sergeant Carter, who would see what Gomer had done pull his hair, which he didn't have, his skin had, and say, Gomer, what's going on here? And he would reply with those three words that I love, surprise, surprise, surprise. And then he'd explain to Sergeant Carter what he had done and why, leaving Sergeant Carter furious, but having to agree that Gomer Pyle had followed orders. I tell you this because I thought of Gomer Pyle. When I reread one of my favorite passages of Scripture for maybe the hundredth time, Matthew 25, the parable of the separation of the sheep from the goats. Now, most of the time when we read this parable, our focus is on the words spoken by the Son of Man sitting on the judgment sheet to the sheep invited into his kingdom, prepared from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me food. Thirsty, you gave me drink. A stranger, you welcomed me. Naked, you clothed me. Sick, you took care of me. In prison, and you visited me. Mind you, it's important to pay attention to the words of the scripture because this is what God is calling us to do, to gain entrance into the kingdom of God. But whenever I preach from Matthew, I always check with what Tom Long, one of my seminary professors who wrote a book about Matthew, the gospel, I always check what he has to say. And what he said was this, that the key to understanding this parable is the surprise. Now, it's not surprising to us that God expects us to care for the hungry, thirsty, sick, strangers, those in prison, those who are lost. After all, Christy read to us from the 34th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel, who condemned the shepherds of Israel, the religious leaders, 
and all those in favored positions because they fed themselves, clothed themselves, gave themselves shelter, made sure everything was good for them. But they ignored the weak, the sick, the injured. They ignored those who had gotten lost, those who were scattered, those who lacked shelter. Ezekiel condemns them in the name of the Lord for feeding themselves and clothing themselves but ignoring the less fortunate. And then the condemnation gets more severe. He accuses them not only of taking the best of the food but making sure the rest is of poor quality. Leftovers barely suited to eat. And though they drank from clear streams, they then jumped in the streams and muddied the water for those who would come after them. Reading those passages brought two stories to mind. One, when I was a pastor in Kentucky, I received a call from a woman who was a member of a church up in Ohio, and she said she was bringing me a pickup load of clothing. And when she arrived and showed me the back of the pickup, there was clothing, all of it, second rate, buttons missing, tears, stains. And she said to me, the people in my church won't wear this stuff anymore, but I know the people in your church will be glad to have it. When I didn't show enough excitement, she said, well, if you really don't want this stuff, then next time we'll just take it somewhere else. I said, please. Why was it that she thought that we in Appalachia would want the clothes that they would no longer wear? I also thought of a mission trip some 20 years ago we took down to Topeka, Kansas. We had to buy food and so we went to the local grocery store right there. Unbelievably, all the meat was like half price. All the cans were <laughs> Incredibly cheap. But as I said, oh, kids, we're in luck. One of the kids said, did you look at the date on the cans? They were all dented and out of date. And when they picked up the meat and looked below it, they said, look at this meat. Part of it's rotting. I called the manager over, and this is what he told me. We get our food secondhand from the bigger grocery stores out in the suburbs. When something gets almost too bad to use, they ship it to us here in the inner city, figuring that poor people would want a bargain, and they'll buy anything. But that's what we had to eat, the youth. Not that they wanted to eat it, but I said, hey, if this is what the poor of Topeka eat, maybe we should too. But it brought to mind this passage it should come as no surprise to us that those in privileged positions get the best of everything and expect the less fortunate to be grateful for whatever they receive. But here's the surprise that came to the sheep and to the goats in Jesus' parable, that whatever they did or refused to do for the least of the members of the Son of Man's family, they did it or did not do it to the Son of Man himself. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Apparently, those who received commendation and blessing from the righteous judge had no idea that when they were feeding the hungry or visiting the sick or helping the thirsty get something to drink, they had no idea that they were really helping God or Christ or the Son of Man. They were just doing what they thought they were supposed to do. Nothing earth-shaking, just helping those in need. And so too, those who were condemned, those who were separated out, those who were blasted for ignoring the sick, those in prison, those hungry or thirsty, they had no idea that it was Christ. Because if they had known, surely they would have helped. As for just a couple.
common person, hungry or sick or lonely, well, you can pass them by. But they had no idea that it was Jesus in disguise, but that's the very point. Poor people are not Jesus in disguise. These poor, unfortunate people, there's no disguise. They're God's children. We're all God's children. And if we ignore anyone in need, we have ignored not only Christ, but our own brother or sister. I read an article this week about Peter Warren, co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, a movement dedicated to feeding the hungry and sheltering the homeless, visiting prisoners, and offering hospitality to everyone, strangers or friends. When his writings became popular in Catholic circles back in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, he got all kinds of invitations to come to churches or church conferences to speak. But half the time, the article said, when he showed up, he was turned away. You see, he was so full of ideas and so committed to working out this ideas that he would forget to change clothes. Would sleep in his clothes, he'd forget to shave, forget to comb his hair, and when he'd show up at a church, they'd say, um, I'm sorry, you're not speaking here looking like that. Okay, he'd say, and leave. But whenever they'd let him speak, the people raved. The common people raved. He talked about feeding the hungry, providing shelter for the homeless. He talked about listening to the ideas of the poor and powerless and about forming farming communes that food security could be universal. And then he committed himself to carrying out these commands. Many church leaders were turned off by his proposals. They said, too simplistic, not practical, but surprise, surprise, surprise. The common people who heard it responded. And even if they didn't join his movement, they resolved to do more for the least of these Christ's brothers and sisters. But this sermon isn't about Peter Warren or about the Sadducees and Pharisees to whom Jesus was talking. It's about you and me. Odds are we're going to be surprised on the day of judgment, but will we be surprised for good or for bad? Will we be surprised that we failed so often? Or that perhaps we came through more than we remembered? I guess it's up to you. This is the table of the Lord for everyone. Men and women will come from north and south and east and west. They'll gather around this table in the kingdom of God, all the sheep, and they'll share together in this holy meal. And so you are invited. And you who are on live stream or are watching a tape, feel free to join us. For when I consecrate these elements, I will also consecrate the elements back home. With the elders serving on session, please come forward to serve the meeting. sisters, this is the glorious feast prepared for us by Jesus Christ, who on the night of his betrayal took bread and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, he took up the cup and he poured saying, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this, all of you, Jesus said, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, 
You remember Jesus' death until he comes again. Let us pray. Lord God, you created us good. You created us for one another to help those in need, but too often we have failed. Jesus Christ came among us to teach us the way to live, to forgive our sins, and to restore us to your favor. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us, upon these common elements and upon the elements prepared in homes. Let them become for us body and blood of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ has been broken for you, gluten-free in the middle, regular bread on the outside. Hold the bread till all have been served, that we might eat together. cup of salvation. Please hold the cup till all have been served, that we might drink together.
Let us pray. Lord, you have fed us with spiritual food with your body and blood. Now send us into the world to do your work. Through Christ we pray. Amen.